call on Reverend Father Bartholomew Bazimo. If you could come up, please. Sister Eucaria, Sister Margaret Pat Doyle, if you could come and join us here. And Stephen. So I stand in front of you for an important event. This is to award to an important person to AFGN who has been at the beginning of the founding of AFGN through the many years who had the opportunity this morning to present a few elements about what AFGN has been. So I'm just going to share with you the tremendous background and work that um, our our dears really done in the course of those many years. So it's about Sister Maura Brown. So who is Sister Maura Brown? So I would, I want to you to discover with me who she is. So the Africa Faith and Justice Network proudly bestow its Faith and Justice Award for 2023 to Sister Maura Brown from the Sisters of Notre Dame de Namur. So, so Sister Maura Brown is a sister of Notre Dame de Namur a lifelong promoter of social justice among the congregations of women religious and a passionate advocate for justice for Africa. Please, if you don't mind, maybe just bring a chair. She would sit. Uh, you are fine? Okay, good. You know how beautiful she is, no? Yes. So, Sister Mauna Brown, has been an integral part of AFGN for all 40 years since the founding of the network. He served AFGN for 13 years, first as Associate Director, then as Executive Director, and later as AFGN Interim Director. She is currently the Vice Chair of AFGN's Board of Directors. And she is the first and only woman who has served as Executive Director of AFGN. Sister Maura's passion for justice is deeply embedded in her call as a sister of Notre Dame de Namur. She joined the Sisters of Notre Dame de Namur 70 years ago. Imagine. I was not yet born. <laughs> huh? <laughs> so in her own words, while Sisters of Notre Dame de Namur value direct service with and for people living in poverty, their prophetic vocation calls them also to recognize and change the underlying causes of injustice at the roots of that poverty. Although she considers her encounter with Evgen as a birthday gift. Sister Maura made the work of Evgen her lifelong commitment at a time when issues of social justice were relatively new. And when it was very difficult to convince other congregations to come on board. As executive director, she insisted that the agenda of AFGN must be driven by Africans on the continent and not from Washington. She worked hard to expand the credibility of the network both in the US and in Africa. Because of her contributions, AFGN has become credible in promoting US-Africa relations here in Washington DC and a force for good in the countries where AFGN 
works in Africa. Sister Maura is a graduate of Emmanuel College and the Northeastern University School of Law, both based in Boston. She has a master's degree. Prior to her AFGN service, she taught biology and science in Catholic schools in Massachusetts before serving as the principal of Mikunduri Girls High School in Kenya, for those who know Kenya. Subsequent to serving as the executive director of AFGN, Sister Maura served in leadership position within her religious congregation and as the international school sisters of Notre Dame coordinator of justice, peace and integrity of creation. She has traveled to 15 African countries. Imagine, wow, during the course, in the course of her career. But her heart lies with AFGN, I repeat. But her heart lies with AFGN. And again, but her heart lies with AFGN. According to Fadaroko Populo, a longtime friend and former executive director of AFGN, Sister Maura has been a faithful member who has been the friend to keep AFGN on track with its changing mission. She has used her time, passion, and experience to mentor and coach through the years the African sister of her community as well as others in the ways of advocacy, justice, and peace work. These two significant aspects of her work are what makes Sister Maura so important for the work of advocacy and peace in Africa. It is therefore truly an honor to present to Sister Maura this award, which is AFGN highest, 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 and highest honor publicly given to a person or persons who prophetically embody characteristics of faith, collaboration, and being an instrument of dedication and advocacy on behalf of justice for Africa. Please join me to congratulate again Sister Maura for this wonderful hour. You can read. Uh, read. Let me read. Okay. You can read. Okay, let me read for those who are far. This is what is written. AFGN Faith and Justice Award 2023, given to Maura Brown, Sisters of Notre Dame de Namur, in grateful appreciation of your distinguished and long-standing service, leadership, and advocacy for justice for Africa.
So we will now listen to Sister Mora's acceptance speech. <laughs> you can sit down. Yeah, you go. You can sit down. I can sit down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're now the you're now an elder. Now you're an elder. Oh, I'm the elder. I'm the elder. Yeah. Come here. Is this all right now? Yes. Yes. I guess I need to say a Sante Sana, which is why we are here. What a surprise. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you very, very much. And, you know, I have to tell you why my assignment to AFJN or my acceptance at AFJN was a birthday gift. But not only was it a birthday gift, but it's a gift that has been giving, giving, giving ever since. All the wonderful things Baz just spoke about, all the great opportunities and wonderful op things I had. And, you know, I need to say thank you to the people of McKindry in Kenya who introduced me to Africa and even acknowledged Patty Chappelle visited me there so she could see how happy I was living there. But, um, and of course, most of all, I need to thank AFJN and the staff of AFJN. We have the most wonderful staff at AFJN. Resilience. It shows, <clears throat> it shows in today's meeting, our gathering, and it's so good to be together face to face. I just wish we could do it more often. I think we need to celebrate 41 years and 42 years. And so we can be together. It makes a difference. You know, Zoom is good, but face-to-face -face is just wonderful. So thank you for making it happen. And thank you to the staff for being so resilient all the time. We had no executive director. And Steve for coming along and thanking us. And I got to tell you about my birthday gift. You know, when I finished law school, after having been in Kenya, I had to settle down in this country. And I had two job offers, both of which would pay about forty or fifty thousand dollars in nineteen eighty dollars then. But I didn't feel comfortable with either one. It just didn't hit what I wanted to do. And during law school, you know, I was often distracted about Kenya. And about Africa. Well, I only knew Kenya, so I shouldn't say Africa. It was Kenya that is all that I knew then. It was only one little part of Kenya, really. So I wasn't very well educated on Africa. But as I looked and I said, you know, my, my, I need to be in the United States to look at policies and look at justice. And But I, I didn't want to take either of those jobs. So sisters in Boston said, Marva, would you just sit down and write the job description that you would want? <laughs> and I said, I can't write it because no such job exists. And this is what I meant when I talked about the spirit blowing around in those days in different ways. That's what I meant this morning. And all of a sudden, I wrote it down and left it there. And I happened to be living in the provincial house at the time, which was a good thing. Dartmouth Street, those who know Boston. And all of a sudden... Uh, the next day was my birthday, a hot, hot August day. And I'm sitting down, and I said, oh, what am I going to do? And I said, oh, let me look at the National Catholic Reporter. By the way, look at this this uh, National Catholic Reporter and see the wonderful article about AFJN that's in there, if you haven't seen it already. There's a very good article in there right this week. But what I want to do, it, what, so I looked at it, and I looked at the job section, I said, all of a sudden, I see AFJ, Africa Faith and Justice Network, and I read it. 
And it was almost the same ideas, not exactly the same words, because our words were different, but the same ideas that I had written down the day before. So I went running downstairs to the provincial's office, and I said, look at this. He says, yeah, that's what you talked about yesterday. So that's why I call it my birthday gift. Because all, but the only difficulty was the application was due the next day. And AFJ, and in those days, wanted a resume, a letter of application, plus a letter from your major superior, all of which I had to get. And running over to South, South Station Post Office at 6 o'clock at night to make sure it got in, into the post office and got postmarked. And then um, the next best part is we are a network, and we have a group of people, and this network was just beginning and how is this network going to begin? And when I came down to Washington, it came by train because plane was too expensive, came down by train. And in the interview, Ted Hayden and Chef Donders and Sister Ian Gormley, who was a sister of Notre Dame at the time, interviewed me. And they handed me this job description that was pretty detailed. And I looked at it, I said, this is wonderful. But I don't want to do this alone. I can't do this alone. And I said, no, you're not supposed to do it alone. You have anything you do on Just and Peace has to be in community. And that was me to it. You cannot do Just and Peace alone. You have to do it with others and you have to have a community and a network. And AFJN is a network. It began slowly. We've talked about it today and we've talked about how it has grown. And the wonderful messages that have gone along that network and the wonderful people that are there and how people have responded. I, I've never seen anything like AFJ. And if there's people are on fire, as it were, with justice. And when an issue comes up, there's always been a good response. And the staff of AFJ and have always been more and more committed. So it's been a just a wonderful job. So that's why I say it's a gift that's been giving. And I thank all of you. And I'm so, so wonderful to see the change in the network today. And, you know, we need to be thankful for the people who would like to be here who cannot be here. Some are too old. Some are sick. Some are too far a distance. And some of them are with God. You know, we had, I, oh, just one little thing. This just popped into my head. We had somebody on our board of directors when we first started AFJN. We didn't have the means of communication you have today. We had to photocopy everything, mail it, put all just all sorting messages, and telephone when we could afford it. You know, telephone bills were expensive. And so we used to write to Africa a lot. And of course, people in Africa would just be, we were all getting caught on to this. And we were getting very, very few responses. We had one board member who always used to say to us, forget about writing to, the, to Africa. Writing to Africa is like writing to the cemetery. That's all I'd ever hear. <laughs> writing to Africa is like writing to the cemetery. And I'd be sitting there saying, yes, but the day we write the right message, we're going to be flooded with the response. And since we're in the synod mode right now, all of a sudden, the African Synod came along. And one bishop from Ghana, Bishop Peter Sapong, came to Washington. And while I was here, he met me and he said, Maura, I was the associate, no, just take, no, still the associate director. Ted Hayden was the executive director. And he said, Maura, if you do anything, get a hold of the linear mentor and send it out in your next newsletter. Well, we had a hard time getting it. Ted Hayden's provincial finally got it, his superior general. And we put it in the next newsletter and it took, we, we shrunk it down to fit one page. And very innocently, I said, if you have anything to say about this or anything you want published about, about this, send it to us and we will publish anything you send us. Well, the mail started coming in and the mail started coming in. And we started sending more and more and more out. And um, there was a lot of life around the African Synod. And then the network just kind of flourished after that. that. That did a lot. And the African Synod brought about a big change in Africa, too. 
big, big change. It was a very time of great change. So I didn't mean to say that, but it's, it's the spirit speaking. So I'm more than grateful. And thank you. And thank you. I don't know why you thought of me, but anyway, you did. So oh, <laughs> thank you. Oh, I'm so grateful. And of course, I am grateful to my family, my sisters, brothers and sisters who put up with me. How many holidays have I messed up because I'm busy on AFJN business? <laughs> How much have they had to listen to me? And two of them had, came today, which I'm very grateful for. <laughs> so thank you. And um, Baz just talked about all the wonderful joys of being the executive director and believe me there's a lot more ahead of us when you just look at the life in this room right now so asante sana again thank you sister mara thank you Steve. that was great. Asante sana. and just so you know this is the hall of fame um sister mara has officially joined on this Hall of Fame, the first recipient was Father Roku Pipulu, who happens to be here today, 1999. Father, stand up and give it up to him. Um, Father is, is for both from the U.S. and from Sierra Leone. I'm my brother from Kenema. I met Father Roku in 1996, and he actually introduced me to AFGN. And here we have adorers of the blood of Christ. Are they here in the room today? They were the second recipients, the third recipient. No, um, Father William Headley was a second recipient uh, who couldn't make it today, but he was on Skype, on, on Zoom. Congresswoman Maxine Waters received it in 2002. Adorers of the Blood of Christ, 2003. Community of St. Egidio, 2004. Right Reverend Bishop Kevin Dowling, 2005. Archbishop John Baptist Odama, 2006. The Catholic Relief Services, 2008. Jennifer Davis, 2009. Father Peter Henroyd, SJ, 2010. Mrs. Myra Woods, 2012. Transfiguration Research Center of Lesotho, 2013. That was the last time we gave. Ten years later on, Sister Maura Brown, SND, 2023. Give it up for her. <laughs> 